Hello everybody and welcome to today's live. Me and Molly from the Key Stage 2 team are going to be speaking all about securing your, could be your first ever teaching job or you could be returning to the classroom after a break from teaching or you could be looking to move schools for September. So yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Hello, hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Yes, I'm good. And the teaching application process, because it is, it's a really stressful, long process. Like compared to other jobs, it's a very, very long winded process. I think that was the first reality I was found. I was like, wow, this is like a lot of work when there's no guarantee you're even going to be shortlisted. Yeah. And it's like, I also think, I don't know why, but I feel like it can be like really disheartening when you don't get, obviously every job is like disheartening when you don't get a job but I don't know I don't sometimes when you go in and you like obviously you're with a class for like only like usually like 30 minutes sometimes it's up to an hour but sometimes you like you know I've been I went to a school like six months ago and had an interview and mm. I I was like oh I think I like really like these kids blah 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 and I left and I like I didn't get the job and I'll go into that in a little bit because sometimes there are re I know like well actually no I'll just go into it now ECTs I think and I was the same when I was an NQT like when you're applying for a job you feel like oh god you know why didn't I get that job I should have got it my uh, the interview went great the um you know my lesson was great my plan was great I had my portfolio I had everything with uh -huh. me and like I went as someone who wasn't an ECT I went for a recent job uh, it was about a couple of months ago just before Christmas mm -hmm. I went to a job interview and I genuinely believed I was a shoe in like I went in I was feeling so confident I knew what I was teaching it was in a, in a topic I felt really confident in with a class age I felt really confident with and I was like Do you know what I'll I'm, I'm gonna get this I was way more qualified than yeah the position needed as well I'd done it for multiple years got there and I honestly I was sitting in the I was sitting in the uh, uh, staff room waiting and I turned I actually went to this school when I was little like uh, it was one of the primary schools that I went to so I was like yeah I'm definitely like, I'm definitely gonna get it and I'm sat there waiting and in walks the woman who's also just been interviewed before me and oh. she was one of my old teachers at that school when I was there and she retired and was coming out of retirement and so obviously I didn't get the job. She got it. And I remember thinking, I said to my fiance, actually, I'm really happy I saw her because mm -hmm. I was like, I was so okay with not getting the job because I'd seen her. However, if mm -hmm. I hadn't got the job and I hadn't seen her, I would have been devastated because I wouldn't have understood. I genuinely wouldn't have understood why I didn't get it. Yeah, and I think it's, it was just like a reminder to be like sometimes there are reasons why you don't get a job and it's not because you're not the right person or <laughs> your interview wasn't incredible sometimes there is someone that just like for me that person had worked at the school with the current head teacher when yeah. like 10 15 years ago of course they were going to get it over me yeah. she, she would have been and do something awful to not have got it yeah. so yeah. it's hard That's isn't it? and you don't know who you're up against and I found that like one of the most frustrating things is you don't know whether you're up against someone who's been teaching for 10 years and they've just mm. decided to move schools or you don't know if you're up against other ECTs and then it's like if you are how what makes you stand out if you've all done the same training and everything like that and then it's also yeah as you said it could be someone who just knows the school really well or it could be someone who's like on placement at that school so I think that's quite common I know quite a few people who had their like final year placement at the school they then got a job at so that's something to be yeah. very mindful of if you are like a third year student just bear in mind the school might be hiring in the next few months and hopefully if you're a good trainee you'll be first pick at yeah them. and but also it's remembering like it's not the end it's um sometimes it's not the bee's knees I did it I was offered my school my final year placement and actually it put me in a really bad position for my ECT year and this may have just been my particular school but it was as if like they were like well we've helped you for like a term so and so when I started as like a teacher it felt like the help was slightly lacking because yeah. They'd help me for a term and they were like, well, yeah, you know, like, you you know yeah. the policies and everything, you know, the kids, but then actually in reality, yeah, it's, it's a massive jump. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that I, is interesting. I do think that, like, 
like I know lots of people who went to their placement schools and loved it I just didn't I just personally didn't but yeah it's always something to good good to look out for it's also like there's been um in this brilliant group chat where if you are a tra- uh, like if you are a teacher or in education and you're in um in this live and you're like oh, I really wish I was part of like knowing other teachers you um either message like us or message um miss knight um miss knight ect on tiktok she basically set up a whatsapp group and lots of people are in it and it's really good because it's really like it's really really helpful because everyone talks about it and one guy um recently was saying that they were like oh i don't know what to do because the school were um looking to hire someone and there were a couple of like ECTs in her on her placement and she was on placement and she was like but I haven't been asked whether to go for the job and one of them had and it's easy to start panicking about that because it happened to me when that was the case as in I was asked and the other ECT wasn't and I remember she really panicked yeah she really panicked but actually it was just because um and it was the and I I said this advice to her actually, and it was it what it turned out it was that, and it was the same with the girl in my in my situation. It was that it was it for a particular year group, so mine was four oh, years. They needed it. Okay. I was currently in year five, and the other girl was in year one in uh, reception, and right. so it made sense for them to ask me because it was going to be with my current placement class anyway. Um, mm-hmm. So don't panic. You can also you you can always apply you don't have to be asked like if your school haven't yeah. asked you sometimes it's because they don't want to come across oh, what's the word where it's like they don't oh someone maybe like, like, might like know. or like i don't know it's when it no it's when like it, is it nepotism when you like pick someone because you know them yes, so yes. You don't ask people because legally they're not like they can legally do that, but legally, like, they still have to interview people from, out, like, they have to interview yeah. everyone. And so mm-hmm. some schools just don't ask. So mm-hmm. just if you've not been asked to see a job come up, just still go for it. Like, don't panic. Yeah. But I just feel, I feel really sorry for that other person who was in the year one or year two class. And I think if I was her and I hadn't really been explained, then yeah, I would try and ask in the nicest way possible just to find out why. Like, is it just because you're in a a key stage one class and that's all the experience you've got or or is it something else that yeah yeah. they're usually really good with things like that yeah Yeah, Um, that's true there will be a reason and it's more common than i think people realize like it's like if you're you know usually schools have at least two sometimes one sometimes two um and you know positions every year um, and I think, you know, it's 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 the same every year. And that's why I do lots of um, lectures for Roehampton University in London, which is one of the biggest trainee teachers, like, university. And I always say, like, it's so easy to start panicking in February. Like, I feel like February is the month to panic. Because you've got half term now where people are like, oh, OK, let me have a look and see what's available. And then Emily's just said then, I'm sure you'll delve into this in a minute, mm. but she said that she she wished that she'd spent more time looking at a school that fit her. And I know you kind yeah. of had that issue, didn't you, of just kind of picking the first one that kind of comes and then it wasn't a right fit in the Literally, end. Literally, we've just put, a vi- you put out a video yeah, today. Yeah, today, yeah. And yeah. also, I think that's such a good thing. Look at staff retention rates. Like, also... Yeah listen to the staff like if you can if you're doing like a school tour because they're quite classic yes Yes. love you to do a school tour before you've even applied let alone Mm -hmm. it's good to try like ring them try to put like a face to an like a name it's really good because yes you might waste like an hour if you go Mm -hmm. on the school and decide this school isn't for me but think about it like for me anyway it took me like three hours to tweak my like personal statement bit for the application and then if you're applying to a school that's like outside like for me like Sheffield County even if I go like into Rotherham that's a different local council so it's a different application form so you're then saving yourself that time of three four hours to write the application when actually you might then go on the interview and have the school tour and go this isn't for me so do the school tour I mean I was saying to you earlier that I've had some schools that they literally put in their description for their job that was like 
don't apply unless you've been on a school tour or you've spoken to the head or SLT because they want I always to know people. Question. Even if I don't have a question, like I've looked at the school application and I fully understand what everything means, yeah. I always make something up. And I ring them and I'm like, oh, hi. So the classic one is, and the really easy one that I find that I use the most um, is if it says, so usually it says key stage two teacher. It's very rare yeah. that it specifies the age, the yeah. exact year group. The easiest question to say is you ring up and you're like, hi, yeah, I've just seen a job interview, um, a, jo a job application up on TES or whatever. Um, and it says key stage two teacher. And I just wanted to know, is it um do you have a particular year group in mind or is it like look is it likely to be lower key stage yeah. two, upper key stage two because i just want to make sure my application because I'm, I'm desperate to apply but i just want to make sure my application is like really um set for that for the year yeah, group. And typically they will put you through to the head teacher and then you have a good conversation with the head teacher and then they like you know i've recently had a conversation where it was like oh yeah would you like to like come in and yeah come in and we'll 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 show you round and we'll show you what would be the classroom blah blah and i feel like when you're finding a school it's the same as finding a house and if you haven't um found a if you've never moved out then maybe you, like if you're at uni it might not be the same thing but i've you know as an adult i've moved a lot <laughs> and you always like i always like when you go into a house it's like oh yeah i get the feeling i could i could live here and i've been the same at every school that i've gone yeah. and worked at that i've really enjoyed yeah i've walked in and i'm like i like them. within minutes i'm like i like them and you've also got to remember you're there five days a week for like it's your second time hours it really is i literally mm. had a wardrobe like as in i genuinely <laughs> i had so many clothes and pairs yeah. of I literally lived in that classroom, like, yeah. I, I, I had a like, dog that, bowl, right? you know, dog bowl, dog, well, at this point he was very small, so it's like, you know, like, little litter yeah. tray bit where he could go, like, literally yeah. my life was, you know, part school, part that, so. So you want to make sure that it is the right school and you are going to, like, want to be there, because if you don't want to be there, it's just, but just horrible, it really I is as well when it comes to picking a school sometimes people just go off oh well it's not very it's not done very well in Ofsted recently so no I've been at schools that have done awfully in Ofsted yet they are the best schools and they've just like on when Ofsted's come well not awfully it's quite hard to do awfully on Ofsted but <laughs> as you know haven't got an outstanding like I think lots of people look for like oh well, I really want to work at an outstanding school yeah yeah and and actually, if you just mainly try and talk to teachers, like whilst you're there, if you get left with a class teacher, try and talk to them and be like, oh, so like, what's it like working here? Like, blah, blah, blah. Because when I went to a school, when I went to a school and I've talked about it a lot on here, where I didn't get along and I ended up leaving like earlier than expected because I just didn't like it. And I ended up leaving and moving to a different school. I... I spoke to lots of teachers that work there and all of them said, don't come and work here. And I ignored them and I went, no, I'll go work there. And actually yeah. listen to them. Um, I can see yeah, Esther, like I'm actually not sure how to find staff retention rates, the exact yeah. Do you thing. know what I'd say though? If you are a second year or even a first year trainee, look now as to what schools are hiring and then look again next year. Because like, me and um, Dan, who's not actually here today, but um, someone else in the Key Stage 2 team, I was having a look with him and I was like, it's the same schools that are hiring now as they were in 2020. And yeah. that shows you if it's the same schools year on year, looking for teachers then you know that they are having a retention issue also well i was i was gonna say if you're not sure it will take a little bit longer but one thing you can do is if you've like found a school that you like um or like found a school that's got a job and you're like oh might go for that go and look at their newsletters that they send oh, yes. yeah. look at the last one that they send in the summer term and the last one that they send before the Easter holidays and the first one back because that's when teachers are handing in notices and usually the last one at the summer is when they're like, oh, we're going to say goodbye to Mrs. Day. She's off to have a baby. Oh, and yeah. after, honest, to God, honest to God, after I left my school, I sort of kept like the, the one that I didn't really get along with. I sort of kept like watching. because I've got, I had like quite a lot of friends there. So I still wanted to know what was going on with it because, you know, my kids, 
I, I taught the kids for like six six months. So I still felt like a sort of responsibility. So I wanted, I don't know, I just wanted to like be like, oh, what have they been up to? Like, blah, blah. And I remember I read a newsletter. It was the last one that went out the year I left. There was, this was a two form entry school, seven members of staff, including one SLT left all in the same time. No and that is like, and it's all, it's very common that it's in that, that like last newsletter email. Um, yeah. to, and access all of that on every school's website. So mm-hmm. I reckon It'll be in the parents section probably. Like I reckon yeah, website. I reckon it must be a website where you can find it. But yeah. I am lost. I thought I would hate year four, but like it and don't know whether to it honestly, it's so hard. Like I I'm very classic upper key stage two, like and I re- I really like teaching upper key stage two. But I have taught one year in year one and I mm. loved it but for me afterwards I was like oh no actually I, I just like yeah. the curriculum more I, uh, yeah that's the thing I, I was in year one as well for like a six-week placement I was like the kids were great but like I was like I wanted to teach them more than just like the basics of like sentences and stuff like that so I'm I'm like a very much a lower key stage two teacher also it's funny because if I could like so I, I like for me I love teaching maths maths is like my thing I love it I love like everything about it and then I hate teaching English and in private school that's okay because lots of private smaller private schools and big private schools actually the class teacher usually it's like you specialize in one and you teach a couple of the classes like maths and then you don't have to teach so I like haven't taught English for literally haven't taught English for years but there's part of me that is like Maybe I will go to year one because then I don't. I know how to teach year one English. I don't know how to teach. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Whereas maths, oh. like, give me year six any day. I think as yeah. well. Like, someone said this to me, and it was uh, it was a head teacher, and we were having a chat about it when I was part of SLT. Um, and I was really lucky because I worked as like sort of the head of curriculum so I did a lot of like the curriculum writing from pre-reception all the way up to year six year seven which was like a really good experience and actually that helped me a lot um just looking at like genuinely looking at like resource packs and being like okay so like even like going on to twinkle going on a planet and being like okay what would I sort of be teaching as a year basis and when I would look at the year one stuff and they're like as I said I was I was very mathsy so I'd look at the math stuff and I'd be like is this what I want to be teaching like am I really passionate about this and I for, for myself I I wasn't passionate about that I was really passionate about like going up but then we were having this chat and the the head teacher said to me a good teacher can teach across all year groups and so it's like even if you get a job I do think your first job try and find a year group that you really feel comfortable with ECT jobs are in year three sometimes you don't get the choice like it is quite common that is true yeah Yeah. most ECTs I know and NQTs year three and year not year four sometimes but year three is like a classic like every it's school has a new year, teacher in a year yeah. three Everything, it's like they're still babies but there's no sats and they're not too grown up like the year sixes well, you, you were in year, year three yeah yeah so i, I fit your stereotype there it, it's so classic yeah. but it's perfect because it is a really nice year group because the, the transition is really the only major thing that's happening yeah. in that year group yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, then even then, it's not as big as a jump from like early years to year one or yeah. like year six to year seven. I feel like it's the kind of the smallest transition, isn't it, from like key stage one to key stage two? And I guess some schools, at least like when I went to primary school, we had like a separate building for key yeah. stage one to year two. But apart from that, it's just like a step up from year two, really. There's not yeah. too much difference. Just before I, was... I forget, sorry, what were you going to say? Uh, no, I was going to say if you're unsure of what year group completely do supply for a year yes no which, yeah. Mrs. For a year. primary who i think's watching thanks for joining us we had a chat with her and you can find all of them in the bio and you can go listen to her explaining why supply was so important i was just going to ask you because you mentioned about private te- uh, teaching in a private school earlier 
Mm-hmm. Is, this might be a silly question, but is the like application process the same? Um, no, not really. Uh, yeah, you, you. So you can't obviously find jobs on the local council because they're not part of the local council. Huh. Um, typically, to find a private school job, it's either on TES t- or TES, or y- you like if you if you're after teaching in private, the best way is to just look on the school websites themselves. <laughs> um private school teaching it, um as a whole is a very uh, is a, it's it's a very different experience like it is a very yeah. different experience particularly yeah. for ECT. i mean it's it's lovely for an ect because you're likely to get a lot more ppa time um yeah. Yeah. Eight, just with how the system works with having specialist mm-hmm. teachers not for every private school but for most um yeah. system in itself is quite similar you still write a personal statement um but they are all the applications are individual so that is one thing i will say if you're looking at if i'm looking at applying for a job in suffolk which is where i live yeah. all, most of the applications unless it's part of an academy are under the suffolk council you know yeah um, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can like just copy it and then change your personal statement whereas a private school's one are all which is just all. annoying when it's the same information like your qualifications your teaching experiences your work experience is the same information but they just want it in different boxes like i felt there should be some sort of like dv like standardized cv section that you yeah. fill out and then I, it's the person I, thing. I was going say one thing one tip is in london for whatever reason lots of even the boroughs the boroughs don't have the same as in they're all the same but they all have their logo on the top and it took me and my flatmate three or four attempts to be like oh wait all we need to do is delete the logo on each one and just like paste it because they're all the same stuff so it's just like little tricks to do it but yeah private school wise all I would say is your personal statement make it really showy offy, even more so than I would do in this. Like when I've applied for private school jobs, they want to know the extra stuff. They want to know what else you can offer the school, like clubs right. and stuff like that. If you if you did dance, if you did ballet for six years when you were little, tell them that because they love that. If you were a lifeguard at a swimming pool for when you were fourteen tell them that <laughs> whereas things like that you wouldn't tell them yeah, that you wouldn't mention, i guess like in state it's more just like are you a qualified teacher what experiences have you got and how is that relevant to the school that you're applying to yeah so or even things like and it's, this is very if you used to go on skiing holidays as a child <laughs> that in wow. like, so that sort of you want to show that that for a private school is like okay fabulous that's an extra person that can go on the ski holiday each year so it's just like like that they are very like looking for curriculum cross curricular also if you have already been a teacher or um you've had like maybe you've been in a year six placement and you've seen like some results um and you've experienced results or you've been like a ta of a class that have had results put any got in because again because I guess they're very driven on results and private schools, GCSEs, everything like that. Yeah, private schools work off numbers. And so yeah. if yeah. you can put in, you know, I've had, you know, 10% of children in the top 0% of, uh, top 0.1% of the country when it comes yeah. to scores, that yeah. is far better than you saying, you know, I teach really good maths lessons or whatever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. well, yeah. It is. It sounds then like similar, but there are. You just need to big yourself up a lot more by the sounds of it. And then I would, I would say personally, depending on what what school it is, but if it's like an inner city private school, um, when you go to your interview, I would dress even more formally than you would do for a state um, is that general like throughout the whole time you're if you got a job there and you were teaching there would you um like <sighs> that it depends like so i've worked at, i've worked at two both one very montessori one very 
no, I've worked at three. That's a complete lie. Um, one very Montessori, one very in the middle, and one very all boys. All of them will go to Eton. All of right. them, you know. I wore trainers to all of them, pretty much. <laughs> but what the really private one took me longer to get into that. But I do. Mm. Think if I think private school, some people hear it and they're like, oh, I want to work in private school because I get more time. I typically, people think that you get more money, you don't. But people think that you get like significantly more money. You get like a little bit more sometimes. You do get longer holidays, but there are, and I can see some people have said it in the chat, like there definitely are some like cons to working in private. As an ECT, you don't have as much experience with, children from different backgrounds so therefore your like experience can be limited also for me like someone who's been a teacher for a while one of the reasons I struggled to get a job after working in private was because I hadn't taught English for a really long time because I'd only taught maths or yeah, I hadn't taught yeah. you know I hadn't <laughs> taught science PE you know I hadn't taught any of these like subjects which a normal state teacher would teach I'd yeah. not for two three years so I think that was another thing to consider. If you're an ECT and want like a want a variety, like want to be able to teach a variety of subject, um, state is probably better in that in that mm -hmm. way. Yeah. Uh, distinctly, Charlie asks, "What advice would you give for preparing to write the statement? They're struggling to start theirs. Do you want to answer first, or do you want me to go?" Let me think about it because I hate mm -hmm. writing. So, <laughs> so, I would say you do as, as much research about the school as you can and make your statement as specific to that school as possible. So talk about their ethos and how you've met it or how you've met it previously at placements. And again, find out what year group the, the job is in and be like, OK, I've had placements in year three, three times. So I'm going to talk about all these things I've done. But I think, yeah, for me, it'd be making sure it is. This is probably why mine took so long, is that I really wanted to delve into mm. the school in particular. It's like, okay, you love outdoor learning, so do I, and here's what I can bring to the school. It's like, yeah, selling yourself, isn't it? But being like, why they should choose you over, like, some schools get, like, 100 applications for one job. So really pick out what makes you special and unique, which is horrible, and I hate writing them because you've got to sell yourself, but, yeah, you have to do it. Yeah, I would also, so I would start it with, gen like, so I'm literally going to go through how mine is. Mine is, like, generic at the top. It's like, yeah. hi, I'm a hardworking, passionate, blah, blah, blah. Sort of a little bit about experience in this part as yeah. well. I'd like, also say at the top, if you went on the school tour, be like, I loved meeting you at the school tour. Or if you rang them and say, thanks for the conversation last Tuesday. It was great to find out more yeah. about the school. Yeah, and you can, like... I would put in this part as well, you'd be like, I've taught in this, this, I've done like, if you do a summer camp or if you do a youth work, put that yeah. in there. Then it's like the generic bit of like, what experiences do yeah. you have? In that bit. That part, you... Be kept yeah. for every single bit. And then I did like at the bottom. So I did, mine was cut in half. So this was my generic part, same in every school, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I would mention to be like, I've had this experience in year four and that's mm -hmm. why I'd be good for the job that you're offering because it was yeah. a year four position. But yeah. then lower half, I would then pick out certain things about like what I'd done as a trainee teacher or what I'd done recently as yeah. a teacher that were significant. So I put like, I've had many successes like as part of my teaching career. Here are some of my favourite because it means that yeah. there's more. They're not just limited yeah. to the true yeah and also you'll get the job description won't you so i literally printed it off for every single one got a highlighter and it was like as soon as i like said that statement like literally copy and paste the job description into your application don't reword it because they want it makes it easier for them essentially if, if you've said you have deployed teaching assistant effectively use say i deploy teaching assistant effectively yeah. Here's X, Y, and Z examples of when I've done that. Like, use their wording in your application. Yeah, exactly. And you can, like, say, so if, because sometimes that some of the job descriptions will say, confident in taking on a club. And that's yeah. when you can then be like, so if you've done, uh, if you used to play a musical instrument as a child, even if you haven't picked up a trombone in 100 years, 
just, but you did it for like seven, you know, weeks as a child. You're teaching it to like six year olds or whatever. Like, do you know what I mean? Or like, you were once yeah, yeah, yeah. performing arts. You may not be now, but you are to that school. Like anything like that, particularly sport. Like, if you can turn around and say, "I used to play football. I used to do football coaching. I used to do netball." Yeah. I used to play netball, anything like that. Even if, like, on my application form, I talk about how I used to play netball. I have not played netball since I was 15, but I put it on every time because I know every school needs a football, uh, needs a netball coach. And so that way, like, I'm happy to do that. And therefore, I'm going to put that on because it just, it just helps you stand out from someone else. That's That's true. that it's going to make you stand out because at the end of the day you've all had like every teacher pretty much so we'll have the same te- training it doesn't matter where you train like they don't care about that the main thing is like they want to know why you're better than the other people um mm-hmm. and so and particularly if you're an ect don't feel afraid to be like you know i've had recent so one thing that i s- focused on a lot and i don't know what's going on recently as a like a in your lectures but one thing that when i was there maths mastery had just become a thing yeah, and so every yeah. time in my in my statements i write that i've been trained in maths mastery at university because oh. for school they're like oh actually instead of hiring someone who's and you know been a teacher for five five six years it would be i want to have a mastery school it would be handy to have a teacher yeah. who's in mastery and so that way is your sort of way in you've just had the most recent training therefore you're some of the most knowledgeable people not knowledgeable people on you know the new stuff so if you've learned something recently in uni that's the new upcoming fad which definitely yeah, matters we did a lot of air philosophy for children did you do any of that yeah, and like talk for writing, talk for writing, yeah. talk for writing, and like trauma informed schools. That was all really big when I was at uni. I mean, I don't, I would imagine it's still quite similar now, but I could be completely wrong. Well, so, yeah. Mastery is still like a big thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To try and include those things in it, and also don't be afraid. Yes, you are like an ECT, and you might think, oh my god, I haven't got as much experience as like someone's been, te- you've been teaching for five years but remember like use that to you to your advantage and be like actually okay I have had like the latest knowledge in all these things yeah. and did you mention about your dissertation at all and be like because mine was like cross-curricular I, learning I didn't do one my uni didn't do one when um, I, okay I was going to say to distinct Charlie it's really hard to um get some words down on paper if you do have a um a draft i know the trainee teachers i don't know whether they're doing it anymore but i'm sure they will look at if you follow the trainee teachers account on instagram or um tiktok they would literally help people write their personal statement and so you can like send in a draft to the trainee team and they like especially like they can help you like reword some bits or like look over it and they do like one-to-one chats one-to-one catch-ups about how to find jobs and things like that so that because for someone so I'm dyslexic and writing a personal statement is genuinely like the worst thing in the world and I I hate doing it because I can't figure out what I'm actually doing yeah, um, yeah. what if what I've written has made sense and so having that is like really handy definitely if Do you I know wanted... what EYP is Early years practitioner. Is it an early years practitioner? Uh, I used to be an early years practitioner. Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. If I wanted to work in Key Stage One, yes, yeah, 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 definitely yeah. write that in. Yeah, because so, you're showing so many skills. Yeah, because I also think like if you can work in early years, like Key Stage One, like is like particularly with COVID now. In fact, mm. I as I said, I'm on camp and I meet lots of teachers whilst I'm on camp and lots of assistant heads. And I was chatting to someone the other day and she was saying that lots of secondary schools currently are hiring early years teachers because the um, with COVID, yeah. the t- t- children are back in some of their learning that actually early years teachers and key stage one teachers yeah. are more qualified and better no at 
than like a secondary English teacher. And so wow. she said they're currently her school uh, hiring a position for an early years practitioner in a secondary school. Thing. Uh, that, I've found that like some schools in secondary also teach phonics as well. So it might be the case that if you are like looking mm. to teach in secondary, it, you could have to teach like Jolly Phonics or Read Write Ink, which I could imagine would be quite intimidating if you've never had to do that before. Yeah, true. But, um, could be something to be just bear that in mind, especially yeah, with COVID and the, the loss of learning. Um, do not worry that you've not heard back for six days. ECT pools can take forever. They have had, particularly at this time of year, they have like thousands of applications to get into them. So don't worry. I reckon there's potential that you may not even hear back till Easter, potentially, um, or like March, like mid March time. Um, so really don't like, don't think that it's um, um. And the interview isn't till yeah so yeah definitely don't worry if the interview's not till the first of March. Um, I always panic though, like recently, um, because I work for Twinkle like part for part of the week. I'm like going. I'm hoping to go back to school. And recently, I applied for a job. I like I've I've rung the head teacher. I've had this conversation, and I like haven't heard back from them. And I'm I I panic. I'm like, oh, did my email go through? did it did it not oh my goodness what but in reality it's like the job doesn't close until the 22nd of february so yeah. legally i may not hear like they have to let you know the job run out and so yes, i'm not hear back until and so i always yeah. i always have to remind myself they may not email you yeah. back in a week <laughs> it's okay yeah. they have it it's worth it though if your application's like ready before the application deadline definitely get it in before oh, be like for the school that i got my like um nqt job at i'd applied like a week in advance of the deadline had my interview before the deadline was even done and then as soon as it was done they were like yep yeah, we want you so it is definitely worth doing that if your application is already like yeah a hundred percent just hand it in and if you are nervous that it's not sent and you've not heard anything you can always again make something up and yeah. read the school and say oh my emails have, i've been told my emails have been a bit funny just wanted to check that my application went through or oh i noticed that there was a date there's a potential date wrong i just wanted to confirm my trainee dates are from this till this as um i've looked on one application and it's not it's not the right dates or whatever and then at least they're like oh yeah no we've got your application then that sometimes helps that anxiety uh, ellie says that she lost she lost my most recent interview to an internal candidate which knocked her confidence a bit that's horrible i feel like whenever he's been saying before as soon as you don't get it because i feel like with, because the teaching application process is so long from school tours to your statement to your cv bit to you might have had to to teach like a, a mock lesson or do a are you still there a presentation or something like that and then the panel interview it's a long process don't know if molly if you're still there or not oh you're back i was i was i was i am i'm just trying to find my charger oh <laughs> yeah well you give your heart and soul to it and then it's just so soul crushing when you don't get it but just remember unfortunately schools are going to pick people that they know they've built up that relationship with them they could have been a teacher for like a year at that school for all you know working as like a ta or something and then they've yeah. step up to be a teacher so try and not don't try and not be so disheartened by it because there will be other schools that you really like and love as well and you've just got to keep going with it i know I, it's really horrible I, but it's just and as you said it's it's because it's such a long process um it just feels like you've done so much work for it and mm -hmm. that's why having some, a few little like cheap skills where you can like have part of your seat like part of your you know uh, statement always stays the same and then you change yeah. just the bottom half check like yeah. going to just change the logo if they're the same sort of sheet you can just change the logo over things like yeah. that will will help also TES or TES I always call it TES and then I'm always told off about it but well, that, I know TES but now I'm, I'm starting to change it because I know say, oh, I don't well, like it then not, uh, one thing I really like about their website and applying for jobs on there is lots of schools allow you to do the quick apply option, which yeah, is you fill, or it's basically you fill all your stuff in 
and the only thing that you have to write is your your personal statement each time and again obviously you can just copy it from the last one and do change the bits that you need to do that's always really handy um so sometimes even if you're trying like when i've been like okay i need to find a job interview to like get my confidence up i would just apply for a crap ton of those ones even if they're not in the right area because the likelihood is then you'll get loads of interview offers and then it's like oh which one will i choose that (laughs) helps your confidence a little bit Um, so if you can always find a way to quick apply definitely do that 100 percent um so talking about the interview process ellie says that hers was an hour long which seems really long. I think the ones I did were like half an hour max. And I think one of them was horrible because it was literally teach whatever you want for half an hour. And I was just like, (sighs) okay, what what do I teach to show off like my skills? So in the end, I went for, um, you know, the book by Lewis Saka. There's a a girl and no, a boy in the girl's bathroom. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And we read that chapter of the book just as the boy goes into the girl's bathroom. We did some like story writing around that. And I was just, I don't, I'd never taught that before, but I'd read the book in my year five class before and I just knew the kids would love it. So I was like, so if, yeah, if it's a year that you've already done, see if you can pick up a lesson that you've already done would be my best advice. And see if, or you can if you're them. on placement and you're going to, so I did this when I was applying for a certain job. Yeah you can go so say it's like you know what year you're teaching it in so mine was in a year one class didn't want it but I was like I'm just gonna go for it get one out the way um so I feel more confident for my next one I took my lesson to the year ones and I said is there any way I can teach it to the year ones on placement and they were like of course they were like yeah take do a lesson for me I don't want to teach it and so I did it and then they gave me feedback on it whilst I was on placement so one it was one of my observation lessons so that was done tick that box it yeah. was also like experience in another classroom tick that, tick box. that box yeah and nice. it was also I was getting feedback to be like cut that bit out yeah do yeah. this cut this blah 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 um, best job websites for teaching so we have well we i've not written it because i can't write the blogs because i am very dyslexic izzy has written a blog all about like the job application it's like a l- beautiful series yeah, of like breaking everything down and one of them does have like loads of different places you can get jobs but typically it's local authority if you know of any academies in your area as well, they're mm-hmm. always a good one to look at. Then TES is great for state schools, but also schools that are abroad and yeah, private definitely. schools. Um, and then you can also find teaching jobs on Indeed and things like that, particularly if it's through um, like through an agency. That's yeah, a place to start like, looking as well. Like that. But there's a really good one. I think it's much more developed now on the blog that we've mentioned. It's in the link in the bio. But it's the government website that now, like, lists all of them because all the local councils, like, if you're in Sheffield, it's another thing's kind of it's listed in there as well. But basically, if you are looking at local council websites, check Sheffield's local council website, but also check Rotherham and also check Derbyshire uh, and check bordering counties because they are they do very much like overlap a lot of the time so if you are somewhere that is accessible then definitely check all the different council websites yeah and then london obviously london is in boroughs Mm -hmm. but london i would say lots of it is on tes i would say that's tes is mainly where all the like i i didn't even know before i moved out of london that you could there were like local council yeah, job. yeah. I Sorry. found when my fiance was looking for a teacher, teaching assistant, yeah, I didn't know that you could apply for teaching that yeah. way. I thought there is another one called eTeach. I I applied for. I actually got my first ever job through that website. But I do find that lots of the jobs, if it's on eTeach, it's on TES. So yeah, you on the same the same thing. Um, and then if there's a school that you really like like the, if there's a little village school that you drive past every day and you're like oh I'd love to work there 
go on their school website and they always have their vacancies on there and if you're doing like a three-year course which is what we both did at uni i'd also make a list of like the emails and contacts that you made so i had like i think six to eight different placements across those three years and i was like if i'm like because you lose your uni email at some point in time but if i wrote Mm -hmm. down all those people or remembered them then it's like it, it's much harder to then regain contact with that class teacher because you could always be like, hi, I'm graduating. I absolutely loved your school. I just wanted to check, do you have any vacancies for September? Yeah. That could be a way to kind of, even if they don't, you're still kind of like in their mindset of, oh, maybe someone will be going on maternity in January. We can like yeah. have them there. And it's like the first person. Or like contact. supply from when you finish, even if you don't want to do yeah. supply. Yeah. But obviously most of you... Um, uni courses will end in like uh, may mm-hmm. you then have like half a term really yeah. to work um also remember if you get an ec job one of the biggest benefits of getting an ec job is most schools will hire you from july so you get paid over the summer holidays that's a real classic and more common nowadays as well because they that's want so to be good. able to go into training yeah so you can go in and basically you just supply so that's what i did i did like supply in the school but i wasn't hired as a supply teacher yeah hired as an unqualified teacher for literally just the month of july and august and started my full contract in september but it meant uh, all the work that you're doing for your classroom over the yeah, summer you days, you are paid for that. that. That's because mine didn't start till september and i spent about two weeks every day in my classroom before i started yeah I, I was, like, doing it nowadays thinking. like yeah, it's one of the big sense. one of the big perks that like yeah. schools <laughs> schools put it at the bottom to be like pros and that was always in there to be like if you're an ect um yeah. although it does mean though you can't have a nice summer holiday if you wanted to like go traveling or something mine yeah. was taken away because of covid but if anyone did have plans to do that and you yeah it's like can't do that but exactly it's just i think it is it is quite nice because yeah i did mine was i'd got a job at working at wimbledon because this at this point i was living in wimbledon and i would literally i turned up at my wimbledon job as like manager of like the kiosk for wimbledon i was because i love tennis i was really really excited i managed yeah. to get a job on a whim the pay was really decent i i turned up for setup like to yeah. set up Wimbledon obviously Wimbledon's only on for like two and a half weeks but really decent so I was like yeah amazing got there literally on my first day I got a phone call from the school being like I would like to offer you the job and we'd love it if you started like in two weeks once uh, because you didn't need I didn't need the DBS to clear either because it was already as long as it's already clearing and I'd worked there on placement, like I already had a DBS through the uni. Um, <laughs> and so I remember I just turned around and was like, okay, yeah, I quit. And it was like, and I was like, okay, I literally worked half a day at Wimbledon because I was then like, well, I've got a teaching job now and I'm literally being hired for next week. So it wow. was that it's very common now for ECTs to be hired. And if it's not part of your application, as if it's not part of your offer at first like if it's not initially there you can always ask if you get offered the job to say well my course finishes in may i would yeah. love to do some work with you guys because then like you can do supply with them instead so even if you can't yeah, yeah. get in just to get a little bit of money from like may till Ju- like the, the end of july like yeah, you get um you know you can do like supply two days a week at your school so you're finding your feet but not fully like thrown in there yet which yeah, is nice that's true and that'd be quite nice as well to get to know the staff and to get to know the kids and the catchment area and all those different things hi josh thanks for joining hello hello yeah no 100 percent. and you like also like i don't know it makes those first day nerves a little bit better like i remember yeah. that on my first week in september i yeah. like, like uh, i've i've done a month now See, I was, yeah, I'd never been into the school. I, had, I think I had my second year placement there, but it's only for like two weeks, like a really short EAL one. And I remember that night before I was about to go in, I couldn't sleep at all. I was like, oh my God, like I don't know my kids, don't know any of their names, like I don't know if the whiteboard's going to work. And so you just have all those like first day oh. pressures, don't you? Like, can I even teach anymore, even though it's only been six weeks? I know. Do you do enrichment at the end of your course? So, yeah, mine I did like, so I finished my placement mm-hmm. in at easter 
And then, like, they did, like, a three or four week, um, a three or four week course, not course, it was like a lecture series, it was really weird, on, we went into, we went into school, so it was like an extra placement, but as a group, and you had to come up with, like, a group project, it was basically, like, enrichment, and yeah. I remember was, was the, was, honestly, now looking back on it, it's the bizarrest thing, me and three girls went into an inner London school, and we taught, we pretended, as in, this is what we were asked to do, we had to pretend that we were NASA, and that we were doing a like mystery like lesson about Buzz Aldrin. Okay. And now I look back on it, what a bloody weird thing I did! Like, uh, yeah, uh, we didn't have enrichment, so yeah, I did it. I did, and I remember it was. I don't remember it being a highlight. It was nice because I was teaching with all my friends, so right, okay. big group, so. It literally was like me and three of my flatmates. It was great. Like we all loved it. But it yeah. was I do remember, yeah, we all like but it was like lots of the lecture groups would go to the same school. So you all went in and you taught for like across the years. Oh, um nice. May till the end of June. But <gasps> over some oh, quality. Oh. Well Justin Josh Hallam is here and he's the one who has the penguin story, Mr. right? The penguin man, Mr. Yeah. Penguin man. Josh, as Tommy says. We need to get you to a thousand followers because we just need to have you on live with us just to tell your you know, stories. Because um, it's I Molly's told me the penguin story, but I feel like I need to hear it first hand. I literally, honestly, Josh, you don't understand any meeting I go into with Twinkle. I'm like, oh, guess what was in a live the other day? I have to <laughs> everyone or pretty much everyone that works at Twinkle is has worked in education at some point. Yeah whether they've been a teacher or a TA, lots of them have been teachers for years. And so we all have like funny stories of what happened when we were a teacher. Um, yeah. And we genuinely talk about the penguin story more times than I talk about anything else. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's the best teacher story I've ever heard. And I stand by that statement. In fact, Izzy, when we actually, when I first told Izzy, she was like, I really want to make an animation where yeah. there's just a little penguin poking out of like a, a backpack <laughs> because it's just the cutest thing in the world. Yeah. So if you would like to send us a voice message of your story with your permission, we'd love to share it on our TikTok and get the Twinkle Animation team to do like a really amazing animation of the story at the same time. I think that'd be brilliant. Or if not, send us, if you don't want to send us a voice note, I am more than happy to voice it if you want to like put it in your own words. Um, yeah. Brilliant. Because I just think it's I think it's the best best I think thing to be shared. Ever. ever. Honestly, um, that I think is I think when you're applying for a teaching job, it's a long game. Everything's like, oh, no, no, oh god, I'm applying like every oh god. And even when you get the job, you're like, God, that took like so much effort. Like I've done I've a I've done a like a seven hundred page application. I've done um you know, I've rung the school, I've done a school tour, I've made a teaching portfolio, I've taught a half an hour lesson, I've had a maths and English test, I've done, like, all of these things, and even when you get it, it's like, oh, God, that was a lot. But yeah. stories you will have for the rest of your life. Yeah, and no other, There's no other place that you could get sort of stories like being a teacher. The, the countless amount of things... I look back on I actually saw recently a teacher on TikTok they have a jar so it was classic that midwives would do it so when they delivered a baby they'd put like the blue and the pink and the white oh, gems in to be like yeah. when it was full it was like oh this is how many babies I've delivered yeah, now yeah. or teachers doing it with the children that they've taught and so they're putting in oh. be like that's my class but I've also yeah. seen that have a jar on their desk and when something funny or when something happens that makes them go like oh my god what is my life as a teacher they like note it down on a post-it note and shove it in this jar and then at the end of each year they like put it in like a scrapbook and then they literally have because I've forgotten so much honestly it was actually my grand because my granddad was a teacher and my granddad said to me everything you do that's that happens that's funny or really happy really exciting 
you know, when you have that like big emotion at school, write it down. Um, and he was like, because realistically, like you could write a book at the end of this, like, yeah, of course, like yeah. you could write a book at, by the end of the week, like with the yeah. amount of stuff that happens. Yeah, yeah. As Josh has said, he could do it by the end of the day. <laughs> But yeah, I I always made like a conscious effort. One mm. because myself and my partner teacher are convinced we are going to write the next biggest sitcom yeah. about working in a primary school. Yeah, because there aren't any; they're all secondary based. They're all secondary based, and we are yeah. convinced these stories that we have. So we would know everything down. Honestly, I'd be in my classroom. I'd be like, "Oi." Francesca I was like I need I'm gonna send you an email I need you to write it down in the book <laughs> but uh, yeah just it's honestly the most rewarding job so even though it does take a while to apply for it don't give up yeah. not getting yeah. the jobs and when it's like uh, uh, just keep going because it's really worth it like at the end of the day yeah, yeah. it really awesome. is yeah thank you everyone for joining our live no. yeah anyone's got any more questions let us know and then yeah as we said before in the bio there's a link to three parts of the blogs that go through from like pre-application on school tours things like that to then interview day what to expect and the th what's the third one about in the third one's interview day and then the second part is personal statements and the actual application and what to include so yeah so have a look at them and hopefully they'll be helpful as well. yeah cool well thank you everyone for joining us Yes. And yeah, we we'll shall see you all next Thursday at eight o'clock. Amazing. See you all later. See you Bye. later. Bye. <laughs>